Daniel chapter 4, verse 28. And Nebuchadnezzar had this dream of this tree. And he went to the world, and the world couldn't answer him. Daniel tells him that that tree is him. And his pride. And if he doesn't repent and get right, he's going to be in trouble. This message ought to be to Americans of all stanzas of, because America is just pride. And the church. We'll, if I remember, we'll look at that later. Daniel 4, 28. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. And at the end of 12 months, a year later, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. And he spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom of by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Look, look at the pride. Look at the boasting. How great I am. And that's the hymn of the Baptist Church, and that's the hymn of America. How great I am. We're, we're in the news today, Russia has, has gone to war. And Russia thinks how great we are. Look, look, look at all the power we got. Out of Hitler and the Nazis. Look how great we are. And even England, by the power of God, the sun never sets on the English Empire, which is true. Until they perverted the King James Bible and messed with the nation of Israel going back to their homeland, and God said, Okay, broken. America's there. You know, we don't want to be taxed by England, and look at all the taxes we have today by the government. We got freedom. <laughs> How many permits, licenses, and everything you've got to pay in fees and taxes? That's not freedom. You're a fool. So this, he stands up, look at me, 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 myself, and I. Whoa, what an audience. While the word was in the king's mouth, he hadn't even finished. Verse 30. Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of the power and for the honor of my majesty? He ain't done. God interrupts him. He was going to say more. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. Got to watch out from heaven. From heaven is, you know, fire and brimstone came down from heaven upon Psalm Gomorrah. In the book of Revelation, there's great uh, uh, hail that falls from heaven. Lucifer fell from heaven. O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The dream. Daniel. The kingdom is departed from thee. That's it. His kingdom ends right there. He's no longer king. They shall drive thee from men. I don't know who they are. We we saw that in the dream. They, somebody. So Nebuchadnezzar is forced out away from Babylon. Out of the city. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. We're going to go where the animals are. They shall make thee to... Who, I don't know who the they is. They shall make thee to eat grass as an ox. <laughs> Talk about vegetarianism. You know, King Nebuchadnezzar got the grass out there. It's got to be cut. I'll eat it. Seven times shall pass over you. Now, we don't know what the seven times. It's not hours. It's not days. It could be weeks, months, or years. 
by the description, shall pass over thee, until thou knowest that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. You realize this judgment has happened on King Nebuchadnezzar for the sole purpose we want you to recognize God. This COVID-19, the fires, the earthquakes, the, the, the uh, hurricanes, and the grocery stores being empty, and the war, it's God saying, I want you to acknowledge me as God. And I want you to exalt me as God. To Nebuchadnezzar, we will find out it works. To the world, it doesn't work. And it's a shame. What will it take for man to acknowledge God as the supreme all in all and Savior? You can't answer that because the Bible says hell is never full. There are people that go to hell and say, God, I don't care about you. I don't, I don't me, my way. You know, I've done it my way. Not your way. And give it to whomsoever he will. We talked about that. People don't like a democratic president, democratic government. Well, you can thank God and you can thank the devil. And besides the fact is, if you don't like it, God says, uh, Paul speaking to Timothy, you probably supposed to pray for them. Romans 13, you're supposed to pray for them. Peter says you're supposed to pray for them. You see, you know what the cushy Christians want today? They want a life with no troubles, no problems. They, they want a Joel Osteen God. Name it, claim it, everything filthy, rich, and wonderful. And, oh, look at my white teeth and my yacht. What do they say about Paul? Can you imagine what Paul looked like with all the sufferings? Bruised, wrinkled, deformed. Paul would not be a likely candidate for these mega churches. As soon as he walked up to the door, they would kick him out like they did with William and Clara Booth. When they brought the, the, the scallywags and the scum and the homeless and the prostitutes, when they brought them to the church, they, they pulled them in off and said, you can't have those people here. Get out of here. We got to realize God is still in control. No matter what you like, no matter what you say, no matter what you care, God is in control and God's going to do all for the glory of his son, Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men. How? The Bible says that God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. Maybe God did exactly what he did to what he did to Adam and Eve. And there was a tree in both instances. And did eat grass as oxen. So he became, I think they call it a herbivore, herbivore, an animal that eats grass, vegetation. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven. Every morning that dew came, his body would be wet by that dew. Till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers. All right, that wasn't... A, <laughs> Seven hours, not seven days. Seven weeks, I don't think so. Seven months, seven years. Months or years, probably years. And his nails like bird's claws. He was a beast. And... The children's story is Beauty and the Beast, stolen out of the Bible. And at the end of the days, 
It says Jade. That's not the seventh time. It would be, there was a point, it took days for Nebuchadnezzar to realize, you know what? I'm wrong. His pride has even got him working. He's out there eating grass. He's out there animal life. He's got this glorious kingdom. And he's out in the forest, in the woods, in the vale. They're eating all kinds of good food and drinking wine in Babylon, and he's out there eating crabgrass. And my understanding returned on me. So he lost his understanding after he lifted his eyes to heaven. Do you know a pig is so designed it cannot look up to heaven? He said, you know what? I looked to God. I looked to heaven. And I started to understand what? I was a sinner. I was in pride. I was proud. And I blessed the Most High. You know, you get these church. We we're, we're, we're want a revival. We're going to have a revival. You can't even get Christians or knowledge Jesus Christ. You can't get them to acknowledge God. How great our church is. What about God? How great our preacher is. What about Jesus? And hopefully the Lord will see that in a moment. And we'll see exactly where Jesus Christ is. And then you expect a revival in the church. When you have put more priorities than God than Jesus. I made the most high happy. That's what blessed me. Christians think today, I came to church. Doesn't that please God? We got the world in the church. We brought the world into the church. All are welcome. Aren't you please God? God's up there vomiting. And I praised and honored him that liveth forever. God. Whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. God. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. Jesus. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Now remember, Jesus Christ hasn't been born yet. And he does according to his will in the army of heaven. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar could not have known about the Son of God. Where did he get the army from? Out of Joel chapter is the two or three. Revelation 19, when Jesus Christ comes back on horseback, and there's an army that follows him. And all the hosts of heaven. Oh, never. No, wait a minute. Nebuchadnezzar is a man that worships a God of everything. There was a God of the dandelions. There was a God of the roses. There was God of the lilies. There was God of the palm trees. There was a God of the weeds. There was a God of the, uh, of the olives. A God of the grapes. A God of everything. Now he's exalting the one and truly one God. The most high God of everything. He's turned from the gods of everything. To the God of everything. You think that's going to happen in America? I don't believe it. I don't think a revival is going to happen in America at all. I think America's done for it. The question is not if, and the question is when. I've seen videos of Chinese people that they, they, they bring a box into them in the underground church. They open up that box, and there's Bibles that have been snuck in. They had been hidden in. They grabbed those Bibles and they hugged those Bibles like with a child that they haven't seen for years. 
or, or, or a dead loved one has come back to life. They hug it. They kiss it. They're in tears. They're thanking and praising God. They're singing to that book. In America, which version do you want? I got this one. I know you get this one. I, I that guy over here said he's a king, Jack. I am really king. You know, the Bible, it just, it's, I'm not going to bring a Bible to church. I'm going to leave it in the back seat of the car. I'm going to fly off the car onto the road. I'm going to skim it across the basketball court. These are the, I, I even know a pastor that doesn't even bring a Bible to church. That's a shame. How do you expect your people to bring a Bible to church when the pastor, the leader, doesn't bring his Bible to church? I've got it in my notes. Okay. No regard for the Word of God. There is no revival. Forget it. Especially with the modern. Especially with the Bibles out of Westcott and Hort, out of Alexandria, Egypt, the Western church. There will be no revival. And among the inhabitants of the earth, none can stay his hand. What we're going to do is we're going to rally and we're going to crash the White House. And we're going to put President Trump back in office. Ah, I hope you all go to jail. What we're going to do, is we're going to close off all the borders in Canada and we're going to protest. We're going to boycott. I hope you all go to jail and I hope you lose your trucks because it's rebellion. It's against the law. And only Christians will go, fight for freedom, fight for freedom. Hey, we're going to round up and we're going to gather all the trucks in, on, upon Washington, D.C. Uh, I hope God arrests you all. I hope God puts you in jail because it's rebellion, because it's against the law. And we're supposed to be law-abiding citizens. And if you're for that rebellion, if you're for that mess, God ain't going to bless you. There will be no revival. And God says, you know what? I'll give you something more to complain about. I'll give you something even more serious about the truckers and all Russia, attack. Now all the media is on Russia, and it's off the trucks. Thank you, Lord. Because you know what's going to happen in that war? I know what's going to happen. There are going to be people... We're going to turn to Jesus Christ in their tragedy and their suffering and the wars and the missiles and the bombs and the soldiers. They're going to be out there. People out there are going to preach the gospel and people are going to get saved. Because you know when the church grew in the book of Acts, it was persecuted, when it was hard time. You know the church ain't going to grow in America because we're great and wonderful hunky-dory and God just loves us all. He even loves the sodomites, which he says is abominate. There's going to be no revival. Nebuchadnezzar, here he is, this beast. He, he, he's the lowest of form of animal. He says, God, you're great. You're wonderful. And you know what? Not only did you put me in that palace where, when Babylon, which I was bragging about, but you also made me this beast, and I'm eating your grass. You have given me grass. <clears throat> None can say his hand, or say unto what doest thou? The Christians today, all over. The Who do you think you are, God? It's not my president. I don't like it. Oh, they changed the name of God, El Nemo. Global warming. John Kerry spoke. Of, oh, this war, I'm afraid, is going to ruin the, the climate and all that. I want you to shut up. You're going to be, speak stupid. Go somewhere else where there's nobody to hear you and speak stupid. Go bang your head against the rubber room. And there are people today. What do is that guy? What, uh, what about the little children? Why do you kill the little children? Why is there suffering? Why did the cancer kill them? At the same time, my reason. So he gets his understanding. His reason returned unto me. He lost his understanding. He lost his reason. America's lost its understanding. America's lost its reason. A criminal has more rights than the victim.
There are people in the leadership of our government that says it's okay and it's legal to kill a baby in a womb. And there are Christians out there, oh, the Democrats are sinners, the Democrats are sinners, the Democrats are sinners. What about you? All have sinned. Well, not as Republicans. Oh. We'll save the world. Oh, so you're a postman. When, you're, when your Republicans save the world, make it great, then Jesus Christ will come and pat you on the back. Uh-huh. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness return to him. Look at that. His kingdom's back. He's brought back into Babylon. There's a miracle. While he was gone, and we don't know how long it was, that throne remained empty. And no one observed that throne of Nebuchadnezzar. Because the next character we're going to get, we're going to see a, a relationship probably a grandson still on that throne and that it looks like Nebuchadnezzar's wife the queen mother though it doesn't say queen mother it looks like she steps in the room hey son that's a miracle you tell me such a splendor that Babylon was that while this king is gone and we don't know what people thought what they had any idea I mean can you imagine today in America, for whatever reason, President Biden's gone from the Oval Office. Do you know how many Christians and Americans out there would be trying to put a Republican in that Oval Office? And yet that throne, that miracle of God, Nebuchadnezzar's throne is still, I wonder if his crown is still sitting on his seat waiting for it to put on his head. And my counselors and my lords sought for me. All right, here they are. Now, his people finally, you know what? After he gets, here's a miracle. Here's a miracle, okay? After Jesus is born, the Magi are sent by God to go find him. After Jesus is born, the angels go to the shepherds, go get him. Here he is, he's swallowing clothes. He's all right. I don't know why we're having this meeting here in our Babylonian chambers, but something's telling us that we should go find Nebuchadnezzar. And at that moment, Nebuchadnezzar is getting right. Oh Lord God, I thank you, Lord God. You are the one of you're the great, you're the splendor, you're the one who sets up the king's own. And while he's doing that, his council is like, we gotta go find the king. You know what the church needs to do? We need to go find the king, Jesus. The world needs to go find the king of, the, of heaven. <clears throat> but they're not going to do it. And I was established in my kingdom. He's back as the king. And excellent majesty was added unto me. He had more majesty in, in the end than he did in the beginning. Why? Because he honored and praised God and not Nebuchadnezzar. Or the gods. I'm telling you right now what we're reading right now. I believe in my heart. As much as Jesus Christ is the Savior, my Savior, I don't know where he is today, but I believe Nebuchadnezzar is going to be in heaven. In the new heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem. I believe this man got saved, the Gentile salvation, in a Gentile period of time, before the birth of Jesus Christ. He has believed in God, he has believed in the power of God, and God has worked with him, God has worked miracles with him. And he's a far cry from the Pharaoh of the book of Exodus. 
Pharaoh and Exodus was plague after plague, sign after sign, and wonder after wonder. That guy drowned in the in the in the ocean or the water the sea. And is in hell burning today. Nebuchadnezzar had dream after dream, and, and he failed with after fail, and he, God finally broke his pride and he got right. It don't it's very hard to break somebody with pride for. Very hard. And I bet you it was a prayer of at least four men. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and God. And probably others. Remember, Daniel prayed three times a day. You got Christians, oh, we want a revival, and they don't even pray at all. They don't even read the Bible at all. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt the honor the king of heaven, Jesus, before Jesus is even born. The great high God, Jehovah Witnesses. All whose works are true, Jesus said, I am the way, his ways are true and his way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Judgment. Jesus Christ, judgment seat of Christ, and Jesus Christ will be judged at the great white throne. Not God. No lost man is going to see God. They're going to see Jesus in the great white throne. And those that walk in pride, now look, watch this. He is able to evade. That was me. And God's humbled me. And you know what? After this, Nebuchadnezzar falls off the earth. Because why would the world want a leader who now worships God? You know what? That's it. That's the last place Nebuchadnezzar, his life, his being, is found. Now, Revelation. Talk about pride. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 14. Revelation 3, 14. Here comes a good 316. And the angel of the church of the lad of scenes. You know what lad of scenes means? And the pastor told me I was crazy. The rights of the people. I got my rights. Equal rights. This is the period we're in. These things save the amen. That's what you say at the end of a prayer. But you're supposed to shout in church when the preacher says something right. Faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, God says. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. You know, Sunday morning they show up to how great we are. And, uh, yeah, wonderful. And then Monday through Saturday live like the devil. Oh, kids, calm down. Kids, calm down. There's, hey, stop acting up in the toy store. There's people over there from church. Hey, everyone, hold. Put your halos on. We're a nice family. Okay, they cash out in your car. All right, now stop it. Get over here. Put that down. I don't so because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, you imagine that's what God's saying to our church. You know, if you want to be cold, you don't want to do nothing, do it. You're saved, that's okay. But be hot. God said, I work your cold or hot. You would think God said, I want you on fire, I want you serving the Lord, I want you flee. If you're going to be cold, listen. I wrote this the other day on Facebook. I saw this thing, you know, I'm looking for a wife, and I saw this woman, and she's a, she's a Christian, and she's a casual, and she had pictures of herself at a, at a bar down in Port Orange where the bikers are, holding a drink in her hand, and I'm a Christian. 
If you're going to live in open sin, shut up and don't say you're a Christian. Don't tell anybody. Just shut up. You're saved. You're going to heaven. Shut up. Okay? Don't advertise. You want to be on fire? You want to serve the Lord? You want to do... But God doesn't want you lukewarm. God don't want you in the church house Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and in the bar joint Monday, Tuesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and Lord knows who where on Saturday. God don't want you sitting with that wife in the pew in the Sunday morning, and then Saturday night you're out dancing with another woman, and she danced with another man. Oh, how we love Jesus. Oh, how we love Jesus. Wednesday, we can't come to church because the kids' ball game and, and little Sally's ballerina dancing. That's more important than God. That's what it means. Because thou sayest, all right, here's the pride. I am rich. Look at that. Isn't that what Nebuchadnezzar said? Look at this marvelous great kingdom. I am rich. Now this is the church. See how great our church is? That's funny. I, I heard Dr. Ruckman say it when he goes to these churches. One of the first things they want him to do, they want him to go see the church. He's like, I want to go to a hotel. I want to take off my shoes. I want to put my feet up. I want to get a little nap. We came to Florida the first time. By plane, and, and the pastor of the church picked us up. And at two o'clock in the morning, he drives us over to the church. See, our, it was a storefront church. Big deal. I come from Connecticut. We had church buildings, but you know, was, yeah, we're, we're going to build this platform. We're going to do this. We're going to spend. See how rich we are? Look how much we got in the collection plate. And increase with goods. We got Sunday school for this grade. We got Sunday school for that grade. We got Sunday school for that grade. We got all, look, look how big of a nursery. We get. We got all kinds of beautiful paintings and all that. And we got all kinds of newspapers. We got all kinds of booklets. And, and we look at the sound system we got. Look at, we, we have chairs now out in the track of trailer unit when we went and bought nice wooden pews. And we had a pulpit. And we had a brand new pulpit brought in. And we raised, we raised the stage, but we took out the handicap wrap so nobody who's got a wheelchair can join the choir no more. And we don't have deacons, we have trustees. To increase the goods, look how many people showed up to Sunday school. Look at our vans, look at our buses. Does that, that sound like Nebuchadnezzar? And I have need of nothing. And then you get the preacher gets up and preaches about Malachi, how we ought to be given the storehouses of God. I thought you had need of nothing. <laughs> and no is not. Now here we go. Now this is what Nebuchadnezzar learned at the church though. Thou art wretched. I'm an animal. I'm eating grass. Miserable. I'm getting wet when it rains. It's hot out here and poor um, I ain't got no money I ain't got no clothing um, and blind well he wasn't blind but the church is the church has got all these great aspects and how they can bless the world and it ain't never gonna happen and naked that's Nebuchadnezzar maybe Verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Where is Jesus in this church? It's standing outside the door. Hello? Hello? Well, come on in, Jesus. Everybody's. Well, I ain't going in there with Satan in the front row. I ain't going in there with Satan's seat. I ain't going with that music. I ain't going in with that Bible. I ain't going with that group of people. I don't hang around with the Sadducees and Pharisees. I 
ain't going in there. But if one person will come and open the door and, and dine with me and suck with me and fellowship with me, I will come in unto him. Look, look, he said, I will come to him, not the church. I will sup with him, not the church. And he, individual, with me. Friend, you think you got a great church? You think you got a great pastor? Oh, the, Jesus Christ is standing outside your door saying, anybody want to come out? Nebuchadnezzar says, you know what, God? I've had enough of this. You're the God. You did all this. You're even still blessing me with life and food. To you be the praise and honor. How great thou art. Hey, Nebuchadnezzar. Hey, we've been looking for you. Hey, guys. What's going on? Will you get back to the palace? Man, the workload is getting overflowing in... All right, let's go. Thank you, Lord, where I am. And then Nebuchadnezzar falls off the earth. 